Bonjour. It's Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on uh, YouTube and uh, Insegna Booksellers. And uh, today is uh, lesson number 37. It's also a presentation, a podcast, whatever you want to call it. It'll be fine as long as you follow it. And if you are learning French or Spanish or other languages as well, contact me and we can have a chat and... Uh, Insegna Booksellers has a lot of resources. It's Christmas time, a time in the new year, a time for reflection and to make uh, new plans uh, for the new year as well. Okay? And uh, today is Friday, the 2nd of December, 2022. So how are we going to start today? Well, I would suggest that uh, reflect on the nine parts of speech. When we speak, there is a structure to what we say, and the nine parts of speech are very important. But the ones that really come, that you know, we need to learn are the nouns, in other words, the words, the adjectives, and the verbs. Then, uh, say, the articles and the pronouns, and the four other invariable parts of speech, they are sort of the, those first three, uh, they help the, those first three uh, in the making of good uh, sentences. But you can make a sentence just with a verb, with the nouns, verb, uh, nouns and adjectives and verbs. They are the simple tense, the, the simple sentences that you can make. And the more you make of them, the better it is. So if you're learning the present tense of, um, you know, je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, or je, tu as, il a, nous, nous avons, vous avez, ils sont. So you can make sentences out of those verbs. So when you learn the verbs, uh, and uh, if you learn the future tense and the past tenses, it all helps. Okay, so that's that's one reflection. The other one is, of course... And I've tried it myself here. I've been doing the songs all year, literally, uh, certain songs like La Vie en Rose. But do I remember the words? Des yeux qui font baisser les miens, un rire qui perd sur sa bouche, voilà le porteur, etc., etc. So in other words... In other words, learning part, learning a part, learning a a song is a very time-consuming and difficult one if you have difficulties with it, uh, because some people can learn them very quickly, but some others it's almost impossible. I, uh, you know, I have to put a a lot of effort in order to, for me to learn a song, but then if I don't use it for the next two or three days, I forget it again. So you have to revise it again and again. That's why I think that the singers who sing songs uh, learn their par, their, their songs, but uh, some of them I notice they use, uh, you know, they, they use the, the lyrics, uh, the words in front of them when they sing, just as a reminder. But there are some others who just know them. It's wonderful to see those people in action because then they can put, you know, expression... They can do a lot of things with uh, what uh, the meaning of, of of a particular song. It becomes almost theatrical. Okay, th- then, uh, you know, let's say you're learning French and you say, oh, gee, this is impossible or whatever. So how about if you also add Spanish to it or Italian? Uh, then you can really challenge yourself. Because then your belief that you can't learn another language if you know the first one, you only know one. Well, you can learn two or three, whatever. But you can't really learn them to the level of English which you speak, that you speak every day. One of my students picked on that, said which you speak every day. But which is used, it's a pronoun used for... Uh, things and animals. 
But instead of which, you can shoot that. That is a more common one. Use of that is more common in English. So which is right and wrong? If I use the grammatical one, the one that I think comes from the rules, or will I use the popular one that everyone else uses? So I was picked on that this week, and it was a, a good experience for me. I don't get that too many times, but, you know, the point was made. And now it's 11.30, and I'm going to start with, of course, straight away. We, we're not going to do a song now. We're going to go straight into the adjectives and, uh, and adverbs. Here we go. Okay, is that right? Yes. All right. For emphasis, many of these adjectives can be placed after the noun. Okay. Une fille jeune, a young girl. Uh, a girl still young, sort of thing. When these adjectives are modified by short adverbs, they can neither precede or follow the nouns. Un homme très beau, un très bel homme. But it changes, you know, the, the homme, un homme très beau or un très bel homme. When the adjective precedes the noun, the S or X is pronounced Z before a word beginning with a vowel. De nouveau, étudiant, les autres amis. Grand is linked to a word beginning with a vowel with a T sound. Un grand ami. Un grand ami. Un grand ami. See? You had the T. Long is li linked to a word beginning with a vowel with a K sound. Un long train. Long on train. In the plural, de becomes de or de apostrophe before an adjective that precedes a noun. Un nouveau roman. De nouveau roman. Uh, important rules. Now, this is not French. It's about French. And I want to make that point right at the beginning of the lesson. Because a lot of people, you know, uh, they mistake this sort of explanations for being French, learning of French. Yes, but the practice is more important. But you've got to do this as well. So if you do too much of this, you get confused. It's better to do this when you do a lot of practice and you just do it as, a, uh, as an addition. You know, you, you, spoke and you practice French for a quarter of an hour, half an hour, you want a bit of a break. So you go, uh, well, what about this and what about that? So you ask your questions, important. When an adjective is in an integral part of a noun, the article is de, de jeune fille, de petit pois, de jeune gens. When two adjectives are used together, they retain their usual position. Une jolie robe bleue. When two adjectives have the same position, they can be joined by the conjunction e, et. Une femme intéressante et intelligente. If an adjective is an integral part of the noun, another adjective can proceed without using the conjunction. Et un petit jeune homme, un parfait honnête homme. When an adjective that is pronounced differently in the feminine and in the masculine forms modifies one or more nouns of different genders, place the masculine nouns closest to the adjective. Des questions et des problèmes sociaux. Social questions. The following adjectives that usually follow the noun can be placed before the noun in order to make a more personal or subjective statement. Célèbre énorme. I'll just show you the words. I'm not going to read it again. Just we'll go through the words. Here, une fille jeune, un homme très beau, un très bel homme, de nouveau étudiant, de tous nouveaux étudiant, les autres amis. Un grand ami, un long entretien, un nouveau roman, de nouveaux romans, des jeunes filles, des petits pois, des jeunes gens, une jolie robe bleue, une femme intéressante et intelligente, un petit jeune homme, un parfait honnête homme, des questions, des problèmes sociaux, célèbres énormes. If you come to me and you want to learn French, then I'll, you know, we'll discuss what your needs are and uh, I'll provide uh, resources accordingly. So you get, you know, you get a good idea of how 
to get around it so that you too can uh, maintain your mind nimble and you can learn a few things. You, you know, you have to be happy with your progress in the language, doesn't matter how little it is. It's important. Okay, let's have a look now. We said before that there were some, uh, this one's here, the following adjectives that usually follow the noun can be placed before the noun in order to make a more personal subjunctive statements. Apart from célèbre and énorme, there, there are also excellent, fameux, formidable, magnifique, terrible, triste, un peintre célèbre, un célèbre peintre. Describe the things in the room using the indicative adjective, the indicated adjective according to the model. Un chat jeune. Il y a un jeune chat. Un tapis bleu. Il y a un tapis bleu. Then there is un tableau and then there's joli. Une chasse vieux. Une peinture intéressante. Un livre bon. Un divan lit gros. Une lampe, lampe petite. Un fauteuil confortable. Une cheminée grande. Un tapis oriental. Une chaise rouge. Rewrite the following sentences in the plural. C'est un livre intéressant. C'est un film formidable. C'est une conférence importante. C'est un bon ami. C'est une autre histoire. C'est une bonne école. C'est une vieille amie. C'est un, be un bel écrivain. C'est une vieille amie. C'est une grande maison. C'est un nouveau, nouvel hôtel. C'est une jeune fille. C'est un petit poids. Anne has just won the lottery and is going to, on a shopping spree. Tell what she buys. Follow the model. Une maison grande, blanc. Elle achète une grande maison blanc. Une stéro grande en japonais. Une robe longue en bleu. Un chien gentil, petite, amusante. Des meubles beaux français. Des chaussures nouveaux italiennes. Des gants beaux noirs. Un appareil photographique, nouveau, fantastique. Un diamant gros, brillant. Un chat petit, jeune. Des peintures jolies, vieux. Describe yourself, your friends and your relatives. Je suis. Je suis une fille sportive. Ma tante est. Ma tante est intelligente et intéressante. So, I've done that without doing the exercise. I don't intend to do the exercises, but I will show you the words. Here they are. Okay, excellent, fameux, formidable, magnifique, terrible, triste, un peintre célèbre, un, un célèbre peintre. There you are. And then you got the next one. Un chat jeune, il y a un jeune chat, un tapis bleu, il y a un tapis bleu. Un, table, un tableau joli, il y a un joli ta, tableau. See what I mean? You can use... You can do the exercises yourself. Rewrite the following sentences in the plural. That's, in, that's, that's easy enough. And has just won the lottery and going on a shopping spree. Tell what she buys. Follow the model. Une maison grand plan. Elle achète un grand maison blanche. Un stéréo grand japonais. Elle achète un grand stéréo japonais. Un grand, uh, un grand stéréo Un grand, non, elle achète un stéro, non, un grand stéro japonais. So you have to work it out. And the last one was, describe yourself, your friends, je suis une fille sportive, and you can use some of the sentences here to make up your sentences, your short sentences. So it's all very good, really. Okay, so that's, that's that for today. Uh, it's important. There is also here, right at the top, je suis, mon père est, ma mère est, ma soeur est, mes soeurs sont, mon frère est, mes, you know, ma tante est, mon, mon oncle est, mon cousin, ma cousine est, mon ami, mes amis, etc. It's enough to do. All right, so that's that. 
in terms of the, the grammar. Okay, so that's important that we do it. Now, the next note that I've got here was these two plays. Les Femmes Paltrois and Simone fait bonne impression. In the earlier part of my uh, of these lessons, you will find that I read both of these uh, of these booklets. These are original one act comedy uh, plays, especially written for beginning students. Now, what do you do with this? You, of course, read them. You can underline the words. You can you can do lots of things. You can. Uh, uh, read them with your friends, you can translate them, uh, you can learn a part in the play, etc, etc. That's, that's what you can do with Les Femmes Paltrois and Simone Febon Impression. Important. But we are doing, at the moment, we are doing the uh, Conte Sympathique. Now, Conte Sympathique, again, as I said, if you are an adult and you already know English or another language, it's easier to transfer your language into other languages, provided that you learn the words, the nouns, the adjectives and the verbs. And, you know, you can conjugate the, the verbs in the present, in the past or in the future. So there's a bit of work involved there. And then you come back and you practice the French. And this is the practice. I'm going to read this one here first and then so that you can listen to it. I'll do half of it with reading and the other half I'll read together with you, looking at the words. Okay? So here we go. Le Parisien et le Paysan. Un Parisien qui conduisait une voiture magnifique s'est arrêté à un carrefour. Il a dû se renseigner sur la bonne route. La seule personne qu'il a vue était un paysan assis au bord du trottoir. Les habitants des grandes villes et surtout les Parisiens pensent que les gens de la province sont assez bêtes. « Bonjour, monsieur. » a dit l'automobiliste très, très poliment. Les voyageurs qui ne savent pas le chemin sont toujours polis. <rire> Vous êtes d'ici, n'est-ce pas, monsieur Je n'habite pas exactement ici, mais un peu plus loin, a répondu le paysan. I'm just going to keep on reading it, all right Je viens de Paris. Et je ne connais pas très bien la région. Sauriez-vous me dire où se trouve le village d'Enfi Bien sûr, a dit le paysan. Je le sais très bien parce que je suis né dans cette région du pays. J'ai un rendez-vous important à deux heures. Il est déjà une heure et quart et il ne me reste que 45 minutes pour y arriver à l'heure. « Montrez-moi bien vite, je vous en prie, où est le village d'un fille. »« Je suppose que c'est toujours au même endroit. »« Évidemment, monsieur, mais quelle route faut-il prendre pour y arriver ?»« Il y a deux chemins, l'un est en bon, l'autre en mauvais état, mais l'un est plus court. »« Alors, dit le Parisien, le chemin le plus court est le meilleur. »« Vous vous trompez, monsieur, le chemin court est pire. » Pourquoi ça? demanda le jeune homme. Par le chemin de cours, on arrive à la rivière. Peu importe, je peux traverser la rivière par le pont. Hein? Vous vous trompez de nouveau, monsieur. Il est impossible de traverser ce pont parce qu'il est tombé. <rire> le Parisien s'est rendu compte que les paysans se moquaient de lui. Il se mit en colère en entendant cette dernière réponse idiote et il a crié. « Que vous êtes stupide, bête et idiote !» Le paysan l'a regardé avec un sourire rusé et il a ajouté avec calme « Vous avez raison, monsieur, vous êtes très intelligente. Je suis tout cela, bête et idiote, mais je n'ai pas perdu mon chemin. <rire> » Well, is that lovely 
I'm going to show you the words. Here we go. We'll just I'll do a little bit. This uh, the, the the most important thing to do here is to actually have a, a pencil. Oh, you write down the words of the phrases that you don't understand. Un Parisien, a Parisian guy, you know, qui conduisait une voiture, voiture, who was driving a car, magnifique, a magnificent car, s'est arrêté, stopped à un carrefour, uh, stopped on the side of, of the road. Il a dû se renseigner sur la bonne route, uh, in, you know, the intersection there. Uh, he wanted to inquire what was, you know, the right way to get to the, uh, to the town. La seule personne qu'il a vu était, un, so the only person that he knew, that he saw, was uh, a countryman seated at the side of the trottoir of the sidewalk. Les habitants de grandes villes, the, so the inhabitants of the great cities, and especially Parisians, they think that all people from the provinces are, are stupid enough, are all stupid sort of thing. Bonjour, monsieur, a dit l'automobiliste très propre. So, good morning, sir, said the, the automobile, the driver, very politely. Because, you know, travellers who, who forget, who don't know the, the way, are always very polite. Vous êtes d'ici, are you from here? N'est-ce pas, monsieur, said the, the, the gentleman. Aren't you from here, said. Je n'habite pas, but I don't live here quite... I don't live here exactly, but a little bit further up, replied the, replied the, um, uh, the countryman. Okay, and we're going to stop there. And you can continue then the next page. And you can also do the exercises, this uh, exercise relating to the understanding of this particular uh, of, the, of this particular short story. So what you do there is that you can copy the questions and give the answers as well, or you can do the... But, you know, just a, a bit of practice wouldn't go astray to actually read the question. Uh, de quelle région est l'automobiliste? Qui a-t-il demandé? Et cetera, et cetera, okay? So that's that's that. So that's that in terms of uh, this particular book called Conte Sympathique. Okay, so if you come here, if you come to me, again, I can provide this particular book. And the last one we're going to do, before we do the last one, of course, I need, I need a, a song. We need a song. In fact, we need a couple of songs. La vie en rose. Des yeux qui font baisser les miens. Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche. Voilà les portraits sans retouche de l'homme auquel j'appartiens. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle du bas, je vois la vie en rose. Il me dit des mots d'amour, des mots de tous les jours, et ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans un mon cœur, une part de bonheur dont j'ai connu la cause. C'est lui pour moi, moi pour lui dans la vie. Il me l'a dit, la jurée pour la vie. Et dès que 
je l'aperçois, alors je sens son moi, mon cœur qui bat. Des nuits d'amour à plus finir, un grand bonheur qui prend sa place. Des nuits, des chagrins s'effacent, heureux, heureux à en mourir. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle, tu vas, je vois la vie en rose. Il me dit des mots d'amour, des mots de tous les jours, et ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans ce mon cœur, une part de bonheur dont j'ai connu la cause. C'est toi pour moi, moi pour toi dans la vie. Il me l'a dit, la jurée pour la vie. Et dès que je l'aperçois, alors je sens dans moi mon cœur qui bat. La 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 You notice I did that person I sang it slowly, I enjoyed it. It's beautiful when you can actually follow the song, even though you're not Edith Piaf, it's still good to be able to uh, know the, the, the words, but to read them at least. And that's what I've done. The next one is Non, rien de rien, non, je ne regrette rien, ni le bien comme a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal, non, rien de rien, non, je ne regrette rien. C'est payé, balayé, oublié, je me fous du passé. Avec mes souvenirs, j'ai allumé le feu, mes chagrins, mes blessures. Je ne sais plus, je n'ai plus besoin d'eux. Balayer les amours avec le tremolos, balayer pour toujours, je repars à zéro. Non, rien de rien, non, je ne regrette rien, ni le bien comme a fait, ni le mal, tout ça m'est bien égal. Non, rien de rien, non, je ne regrette rien. Car ma vie, car mes joies, aujourd'hui, ça commence avec toi. Again, there, there was a little bit of a difficulty there right in the middle. You forget. And so that's why you got to go back. Okay, so those are the couple of songs that we've done so far. But now, we're going to read from, you know, we're going to read... From Parlons en Français. Let's speak French. Yeah, I'm going to show you, but I, the, the words are very small. I'm going to show you the words here. Here we go. Okay. Monsieur Le Drou. Passe à la douane. Il a ouvert sa valise pour l'inspection et le douanier qui inspecte le contenu demande. Avez-vous quelque chose à déclarer? Cigare, cigarette, vin, liqueur, parfum? Monsieur Le, le Drou répond. Non, rien. J'ai acheté une cartouche de cigarette dans l'avion. Et c'est tout. Le douanier referme la valise et dit « Bon, ça va passer, Monsieur Le Drou prend sa valise et marche vers la, vers la sortie. » Ok, that's a good one. You should be able to do this one. Ok, you should be able to do this particular 
They're just... Okay, let's go. Let's go, okay. For example, if we go through Monsieur Le Droux pass à la Douane, uh, the, the customs. Il ouvre sa valise pour l'inspection. So he opens his, his uh, suitcase for the inspection. Uh, and the, the custom officer inspects the continued demand. Who inspects the container? Who has to inspect the, you know, what is in the, in the valise? In asks, he asks, do you have anything to declare? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's how you do it. And when you can't do it, just underline those words. As I said, that's that's important. That's why it's important if you are serious about learning French and you have some time and you're in the third age. Even if you ask, you know, if you go, come to me on a Saturday or whatever, and we discuss your French needs, that's important. Okay, now the questions are, yeah, okay, so let's do this one here, question. Que fait Monsieur Ledrou? Est-ce que sa valise est ouverte ou fermée? Que fait le douanier? So, que, uh, he says, est-ce que Monsieur Ledrou achète des liqueurs et des parfums dans l'avion? Qu'est-ce qu'il a acheté? I got distracted there. Never mind. Okay, let's go. Que, qu'est-ce qu'il qu qu a acheté? Que demande le douanier? Qui referme la valise? Monsieur Le Drou ou le douanier? Qui porte la valise? Est-ce que Monsieur Le Drou marche vers l'avion? Est-ce que nous, que nous parlons votre langue maternelle? Quelle langue parlons-nous ici? Est-ce que vous parlez bien français? Est-ce que c'est un stylo, agenda, sac à main française? Est-ce que c'est une montre soviète bague française Est-ce que ce sont des cigarettes allumettes boucles d'oreilles françaises ou américaines Où avez-vous acheté votre stylo serviette Est-ce que vous, votre agent est plus grand ou plus petit que votre livre Est-ce qu'une cigare est plus grand ou plus petit qu'une cigarette Est-ce qu'un sac à main est plus grand ou plus petit qu'un sac de voyage Est-ce que vous avez acheté votre serviette au sac à main euh Qu'est-ce que met dans une serviette un sac à main Est-ce que des, les appareils de photo, les parfums et les liqueurs sont des choses à déclarer à la douane Est-ce que les livres et les journaux sont aussi à déclarer à la douane So, here... Okay, here, these are the questions. And so, it is, this is called uh, reading... Comprehension. That's what you do. That's why it's important to, to do these exercises. And then if there are questions, grammatical questions, fine. Not a problem. As long as you remember that actually doing the practice of reading and trying to answer those questions uh, is very important. And you practice with someone else, even after you've learned every bit and, you know, every word and every phrase that you didn't know, then the practice, the oral practice, it becomes important. Okay, so that, that's that uh, for, for French. I'm going to do one more song. And then we'll go to Spanish. Okay, so today we've done a pretty good time. With, uh, with this one here. Now, I've got a couple more songs. We had um, lyrics. One of them I'll remind you from, uh, from, uh, what's, uh, from Edith Piaf. We've got the lyrics of 
Milord, allez, venez, Milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, Milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos pains sur mon cœur et vos pieds sur une chaise. Je vous connais, Milord, vous ne m'aviez jamais vu. Je ne suis qu'une fille du porte. Qu'une ombre de la rue, pourtant j'y vous offre, etc., etc. So that's a good one to learn as well. And then, tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, et mon cœur s'habille de noir. Ce soyez cortège, tout en larmes blanches, l'oiseau sur la branche. Pleure le sortilège, tu n'y viendras pas ce soir. So we've done that one as well. And the last one that we've done, huh? we did this one here. Si je t'oublie pendant le jour, je passe mes nuits à te maudire. Et quand la lune se retire, je l'âme vide et les cœurs lourdes, lourdes. La nuit, la nuit, tu m'as perdu et mon etc. And the last one, we also did one more called Caruso. La lune brille sur la mer, souffle le vent en rafale. Sur la vieille terrasse au bord de, du golfe de Sorrento, un homme serre une fille très fort sans re retenir ses larmes. La gorge nouée de chagrin, pourtant malgré lui, il chante. Je t'aime, tant je t'aime, passionnément, et tu le sais. Dans le fond de moi-même, je ressens ta chaleur comme jamais. Cette lumière, cette... etc., etc. So th these are the songs that we've done for French this year, and uh, they're wonderful to learn. Okay, so th that's that in terms of the French for uh, for today. And uh, now we're going to go to the Spanish. And what will I start with? I said. I'm going to start with, same as with the French, I'll start uh, with um, what I, I think is important as well. It's about, this, this one here, this particular book is more like a practice, you know, practicing French. Okay, so the French is, uh, um, let, me, let me read you uh, some, you know, some of the sentences. This says here, extra, uh, the noun and the definite article, plural comparisons between singular and plural forms. Estructuras de la lengua. lengua. La mujer lee el libro. The woman reads the book. La chica mira la flor. The girl looks at the flower. El hombre y la mujer visitan el teatro en, en España y escuchan la canción española. The men and the women visit the theatre in Spain and listen to the Spanish song. Okay, listen to is escuchar. Plural is las mujeres leen los libros. The women read the books. Las chicas miran las flores. Los hombres y las mujeres visitan las canciones españolas. So the men and women visit the theatre in Spain and listen to the Spanish songs. Now, have a look. Here we are. And that's the plural. See that? It's important that you uh, learn. I actually got a few, a Spanish grammar the other day. I brought in a Spanish grammar. And, uh, you know, it was almost half the size of the French one. It doesn't, so the Spanish grammar seems to be a lot easier than the French or the Italian. They're very interesting. But I have to look through it myself now. So it would be good to have someone else learning Spanish alongside with me. It would be great. I've tried it in a few people, but unless people have interest, they can't really come into it. Yeah. 
the rose uh, loss means the that before a masculine plural noun. Last means that before a feminine plural noun. Spanish has four definite articles. L, masculine, los, masculine, la, feminine, and las uh, in the plural. Easy. Only four articles. L and los, la and las. That's it. They are the definite articles. Now, to form the plural, add s to masculine and feminine, nouns that end in a vowel. Okay? For example, el uso, los usos, la uva, las uvas, la flor, las flores. The flower. Omit the accent mark from the final syllable when adding es to nouns ending in yon. For example, la lección, las lecciones. La canción, las canciones. Change the final z to c before adding s. El lapis, the pencil, los lapises. La luz, la luce. La luces, the, the lights. Okay, so that's basically it there. So uh, just a few, uh, you know, a few rules. Other uses of the definite article. La familia es importante. Los amigos are también son importantes. Okay, rules. Spanish insists on using el, la, los, and las before nouns used to make generalizations. English omits the definite article by making a generalizing statement. For example, oh, there, there, there are no... Uh, uh, no, there are no exercise, exercises. Spanish insists on using el, la, los, and las before nouns used to make generalizations. Whatever that means. Before some geographic names, La Argentina, El Brazil, El Canada. I'll show you these ones. So again, these books here are here, and they can be accessed. See that? That's what we did before. We've done this one. And that one there too. There are no exercises. But now there, there is here. See that? La Argentina, El Brazil, El Canada, La China, Los Estados Unidos de America, Los Estados Unidos de Mexico, La Florida, La Habana, Habana, yeah, you got that? La Florida, La, la Habana, La India, El Japón, El Panama, El Perú, El Salvador. Okay. Now, the use of the definite article before the name of a country has been on the wane in the last quarter century. However, this practice is still quite popular and generally accepted. English does not use the before these place, place names, except for Los Estados Unidos, the United States, or in rare references to La Argentina, is the Argentine, or oh, we we'll just say Argentine. The inclusive masculine plural Miran todo el chico y la chica, to the boy. Visitan museos el primo Juan y la prima Anya. Si los chicos miran todo. Yes, the boy and girl look at the everything. Los primos Juan y Anya visitan dos. Uh, yan visitan museos. Visitan museo el primo Juan y la prima Anya. Si los chicos miran todo. Yes, the boy and the girl look at the, everything. Si los primos Juan y Ana visitan museos. The masculine plural article and noun may refer to both feminine and masculine persons when they are grouped together. So the, con the context alone tells where the reference is to a group consisting of feminine and masculine persons or only of masculine persons. Email about the people, place and things that you neighbourhood. Complete the sentences with the plural of the article noun in italics. El Chico. Email us about the place in, in complete the sentences with the plural. 
el chico uh, son, eh, son eh, estudios. La avenida son grandes. El semáforo controla el tráfico, etc., etc. Okay, we're going to stop there for today. And that's it. There's, uh, again, you know, with a language, you need to do uh, some of the grammar. It's inevitable. If you're an adult, though, it's easier for you than with children. Much easier. But you have to have commitment to it. Otherwise, you can't really do it. Okay, now this one here is... The, the dancing lesson. La lesión de baile. La señora de Martinez. I'll show you what it is. Here. See that? A dancing lesson. It just goes two pages. So I'm just going to read it. Okay. And uh, well, again, I have these books. If anyone wants them, all you have to do is order them. Okay. La señora de Martínez, Alicia Martínez, uh, 17 años. El Clara Martínez, 15 años. El profesor de baile, una criada. Elegante sala de recibo. Hay un toga discos en un ángulo, ángulo de la sala. La señora de Martínez está senta da en un silón. Las dos hijas en un sofá examinan una revista de moda. Alcía se viste de charro, pantalón negro, uh, pantalón negro ajustado con franja de metal, camisa blanca, chaqueta negra ajustada. Corbata roja, sarepa al hombre y sombrero grande. Clara eleva, trae de china poblana, uh, falda verde roja, muy amplia. Camisola blanca, rebozo de color, medias de color y zapatillas, uh, zapatillas negras. Se oye la campanilla, sale la criada con un Bandea de plata con la cual se, ve, se va una par, tarjeta. La señora de Martínez. Niñas, allí viene el profesor de baile a la criada. Introduce... Uh, allí viene el profesor de baile. Introduzca usted a ese caballero. Las niñas muestran alegría. La criada sale y entra con el profesor, el señor profesor Don Francisco Herrera, el profesor haciendo refer reverencia, eh, señora, señoritas, a sus órdenes, or a sus orden órdenes, la señora caballero, ha venido usted a dar a mis niñas la lección de baile. La duquesa de la torre de, da una fiesta de fantasía y mis niñas, Alicia y Clara, van de tapatíos. Es necesario que bailan el jareba, jaraba, tapatío. ¿Comprende usted? Perfectamente, señora. Alicia, estarán bien estos trajes. Los hemos sa sasado de una revista. Etcétera, etcétera. Okay, uh, I'm, I might as well finish this off. Okay, el profesor perfecto, señorita. Ahora veamos el jarabab tapatío. Es un baile popular de México. Lo bailan muchos los tapatíos. No es difícil de aprender. Aquí tengo el disco con permiso. Introduce el disco en el tocadis, toca discos. Vamos a ver usted aquí, señorita, y usted aquí darán los pasos y vueltas seg según lo cuente e indique. Toco 
toca el disco, cuenta suavemente y hace movimientos como dirigiendo el baile mientras ba bailan las niñas. Al terminarse el baile, las niñas sonríen mientras el profesor y la madre aplauden. Muy bien, pero muy bien. Lo hacen ustedes a la perfección, señoritas. Gracias. Vuelvo usted mañana a la mis misma hora. El profesor haciendo reverencia. Señora, señoritas. Ok. Adiós. Hasta mañana. Hasta la vista. Good, good little play, that one. And finally, finally, we have a bit of Uh, the Portuguese. But before I got to the Portuguese, we have to do the songs, the French songs. There are two of them, the Spanish songs. Yeah, this is Historia de un Amor. Do you remember it? Have you looked it up? Okay, look it up, look up the words. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y si ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir. Adorarte para mí fue religión. En tus besos encontraba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le di luz a mi vida, apagándola después. ¡Ay, qué vida tan oscura! Si tu amor no viviré, ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y soy ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más, etc., etc., ¿ok? I'm going to stop there, because otherwise there's no time for our Portuguese, ¿all right? Let's go now. This is Portugal. Uh, Portugal. These are the, the, the areas where Portugal has, they speak Portuguese. See that, the colour? That colour there. They speak Portuguese in those areas there, which is Chile. No. Oh, uh, this, no, the, the, the ones there uh, that are like violet, they are under the Portuguese, whereas Portugal has the other one, the yellow one, the Brazil one. Not bad. And right at the bottom, I think, is it Paraguay? I don't know. This one here. Interesting. Portuguese, even though you see, they've also got some areas here in Africa. But this was in the, uh, in the f uh, 15th and 16th centuries. Okay, and that's what I'm reading now. Foi pensando asim que em ait de hulo, julio de 497, una armada portuguesa comandada por Vasco de Gama, compuesto pelas nuevas San Gabriel, San Rafael, una otra con mantenimientos, y a Carabela Berrio, par, Berrio partió de Lisboa como destino a India. So they, you know, they left to go to India, uh, Vasco de Gama. Después de escalar Aram Cabo Verde, os navios desvia Ramse da costa africana, debido a os ventos contrarios, e so, I have learned the numbers, de novembre pasaram a Ocal, 
cabo de boa esperança. Três dias depois, já no índico, a nau que levava os mantimentos foi queimada, tendo passado estes para os outros navios. A armada de Vasco de Gama parou na costa ocidental de África por várias vezes, uma delas em Mozambique e outra em Melinda. Okay, and then I'll read the rest myself. Uh, 18 de maio de 1498, os portugueses que garam a Calecuta, Vasco de Gama, Evem, capitão de armada, e os seus ma marinheiros estavam muito contentes porque depois de um ano de viagem, que o de peripécias e perigos tinham finalmente chegado por mar a terra de especiarias. So you can read th this, you can, you know, you can read it, but a lot of the words need to be understood. Okay, so well, that's it for today. I'll I've taken a little bit easier, uh, I feel more comfortable with it, but of course there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of practice which you want to learn another language. Okay, on that note, don't forget that there's me, Tom Padula, uh, from Tom Padula uh, on YouTube, uh, and uh, of course, well, Tom Padula TV on YouTube, really. But also Tom Padula, there are a few of them there. Just look them all up. And of course, don't forget Insenia.com will give you in the blog section, in the shopping se area, the blog section, there, we, there are under cultures and languages, uh, for, there's French and Spanish and the Portuguese, the lessons that I have now. Okay, you go down the page and you'll, be, you'll find them. But again, if you come and see me, I'll show you, I'll show you how it works. All right, that's it. Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insania Booksellers. On that note, adios to next week. A la semaine prochaine. Okay, now I'm going to go to the finish and put it on online. So I'm going to do it very carefully so that I...